All right, um, I've got it in front of me uh, what looks a lot like a large version of the toe bracket assembly that I had previously done a video on. And in fact, that's basically what it is. Um, my intention is to do a, a, a handful of short videos on different types of uh, boundaries. Uh, what we refer to at the shipyard as both tight and non-tight boundaries. And this is not a type of boundary you would see at the shipyard. You notice that I have uh, a, a tow bracket assembly and in this assembly um, there, are, there are sharp corners. Uh, there, there's no what we call snipes in the corners. Um, at the yard, you would never have a corner that comes together uh, like this. There would always be a hole through um, so that primary hull structure could be welded first and then secondary hull structure welded afterwards and the hole would hopefully be left open and the welds would be wrapped through the hole. Um, but for the purposes of the students and their learning, um, a lot of times if you're building something that's got to hold water, it's got to be you know airtight, oil tight, water tight, whatever. Um, you're going to build it so that there's tight inside corners. The other videos in this series on on welding boundaries are going to include uh, non-tight boundaries and tight boundaries. And again, I'll show that progression. This would be for someone that's going to BIW from my school, the uh, Bath Iron Works. Uh, they build Arleigh Burke class destroyers for the U.S. Navy. We're a general dynamics company in Bath, Maine. You can look them up online. Um, but they're the, they're one of the big employers around here um, that would have this type of. Uh, the, the, I'm welding with flux core also. I'm running 052 flux core wire, uh, 240 inches per minute gas shielded wire with uh, a dual shield wire with uh, C25 uh, shielding gas. And um, right now the machine's on 23.4, 23 and a half volts. Um, and I'm gonna do my welding here. So the intention here is to capture in a series of short videos, uh, the proper way to weld some of these boundaries. And then the last video, I'm gonna weld uh, what we call collars at the shipyard and look at that video to understand what that is. Um, but essentially, this is uh, very similar to what I did with the toe bracket assemblies. Uh, it's just bigger, at least this particular one right here. So if you've already seen that, you may not get a lot out of this. Um, but this one will be, again, for display, and it will show the progression so you can look from one side to the other uh, after the fact without watching the video and see what was the actual sequence that I welded this in. So uh, I'll do my best to make this quick. I'm basically just going to weld it up and uh, we'll keep the comments to a minimum, at least for me, but you know, I'm a chataholic, so you know how that goes. I probably should find my slide camera since I'm welding with flux core. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this vertical first. I'm going to bring it up around the top and I'm going to, I'm going to wrap that top edge. I am going to uh, weld, I'm going to actually bond the uh, very, very bottom of this uh, plate together. So all three of these in this corner uh, will actually be welded together um, when, when I start. Because if the intention is for this to be a tight boundary, I might as well start by going all the way from the bottom up. I do not want to start on the vertical just above the bottom because I will trap a wedge of slag in there and you're never going to get the damn thing out and that will tend to cause cracks over time on parts that are subject to uh, vibration. Okay, So I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to weld uh, my, my way up. Here we go. Now on the second side of this, I'm going to produce that same weld again, but the focus is going to be on the horizontal weld. So I'm going to, I'm going to hammer that vertical weld out here real quick. And then really it's the, uh, the horizontal weld that we're looking at. So I'm going to let the camera play so I don't have to resync everything. But 
Uh, what you guys will see in the video is me starting on the horizontal once I finish this. I will skip forward. Alright, so what we're looking at now is the opposite side of the first joint. Again, this is being welded as a progression model. So I've gone ahead and welded the opposite side off camera. Uh, the next step here in, 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 the, in making this a, a multi-pass corner weld with no snipes would be to simply put the weld in on the bottom. Now, I could come in and I could weld from the wrap into the corner and then turn and then weld out. Um, I could weld, you know, obviously the opposite direction. Um, what I don't want to do is I don't want to start in the corner and then weld out. When you start, it's cold, right? So I don't want to have a slag trap, cold spot, or lack of fusion in, in, in a corner. That's where you're going to get leaks. So the, the idea here is that I am going to do everything I can to avoid uh, starting in a corner. Now I might stop in a corner twice, but if I do, uh, I'm, I'm not going to stop when I physically get to this bottom weld. Um, and I know the camera's not looking over the MIG gun here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld, uh, let me extend some wire out here. I'm going to weld uh, into this corner and I'm going to hit this side and I'm going to turn the gun 45 degrees and I'm going to cross over to the other side and I'll stop here. Uh, if I feel that I can't travel through, um, you have to make sure that you turn the gun when you travel through. This weld is 45 degrees to these other two faces, so ideally I would have the gun... Um, that may be my problem right there. I got a loose gooseneck. What might be the problem is uh, Ideally, I would weld perpendicular with a nice, you know, push travel angle. I'm not, I don't drag flux core. I've been through this before. Um, it looks like crap. There's no need for it. I keep the gun 90 degrees. Slight push, slight drag is okay, but uh, dragging flux core is just stupid, uh, my own opinion for what it's worth, um, at least on fillet welds. So I'm going to get that gun 90 degrees. I'm going to travel into this corner. I'm going to turn 45 degrees. I'm going to travel across, and then if I can, I will turn 45 degrees, and I will travel out. And for this sample, I'm going to stop just before I get to the middle uh, because I am intending to show each side as a progression. So uh, let's see what we can do here on camera. I will wrap that in by simply uh, striking the arc uh, here. Again, turn, come in, turn, turn, and then I'm going to weld out. I'll try to do that all in one shot, and I think the camera will pick it all up. And I'll stop right about there. I stopped just off camera. Let me chip the slag off. So again, the second step here is to get that corner uh, welded on the bottom. Now, if this was a single pass weld, that's all it called for, then we would, in fact, uh, be done. So there is the inside corner. But I'm going to multi-pass this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weld uh, the opposite side here to look just like this. And then we'll pick up from there once that's done. All right, so the next step in this progression is going to be to weld the multi-pass over the vertical. Um, again, just like I did before, I, I want to weld. I'm going to weld for the bottom up. I'm not going to start my weld at the top of the horizontal pass. I'm going to start at the deck. And I'm going to work my way up. Notice that the weld though does start at the very, very bottom. I welded over those other two passes. That is the important part.
I've got my hand caught in the bottom of the plate. As I'm coming up, I got my man to catch my hand on the bottom of the plate. I just parked for the course here today. All right, so here's my multi-pass weld. Again, uh, demonstrating the uh, the next step. And again, the important thing here, the important thing here is that I'm actually uh, welding to the very, very bottom, uh, and, and that's that's the key point. Now, when I turn this, this side will be easier to access. I'm going to go ahead and make the back side double passed off camera, and we come back and we'll look at tying in the bottom. All right, I've got the uh, I got the second side uh, welded here. Again, uh, I'm trying to make sure that all my verticals are welded first. Uh, at least you're crossing your T's. That's the thing, and this is like an upside down T. So there's the first leg of the weld right here, and then I'm crossing the T on the bottom. Um, I want to make sure that those welds go all the way from here to the, you know, to the top. And if this was, uh, uh, you know, had an actual top on it, I, when I got to the top, I would weld to the overhead plate. I'm not going to stop short of that. That is going to create a void, and that void is going to be full of slag. And even if it isn't, it's, you're not going to penetrate through that narrow little void. You're going to end up with a crack, and in, in, in time, that part could, could crack. Um, a static thing might not, but in the context of working on a ship where the ship is flexing in the sea and moving all the time, uh, that's definitely something that you want to avoid. Now, again, this specific type of joint with this tight corner, you wouldn't see on board ship. Um, you'll see those in the next videos, okay? We'll have snipes. But the last step, again, is to put that multi-pass weld, and, and again, I'm going to uh, weld across the bottom, turn 45, come in here, turn 45, and then weld around. I had to stop, I got my glove caught, my sleeve caught, I mean. Um, but again, I want to make sure that those ends are uh, wrapped, boxed, squared off, whatever the terminology you use. Uh, here, here at the school, I use wrap because they use it at the yard, that's where I learned how to weld. transition on the corner there. But it is what it is. Okay. Now that is the sequencing for welding up one of these corners. I'm going to back this camera up and we'll take a look. Again I would weld the vertical first, making sure that I'm bridging all the way to the bottom. Second side, I'm going to come in and I'm going to wrap around that corner. If I'm multi-passing this, and, and I would, if I had a, you know, a, a two-inch weld and there were 25 passes on here, I, every layer I would do the same thing. Uh, again, I'm going to start that next layer by welding uh, from the bottom up to the top, and when I get to the horizontal, again, I'm going to weld that last layer in over it. So it's going to keep that corner nice and thick. That'll prevent uh, cracks down the road. All right? And uh, that's it for this one. I'll see you on the next side. Thanks.